Herbert Alexander Simon, a Nobel laureate, was an American political scientist, economist, sociologist, psychologist, and computer scientist whose research ranged across the fields of cognitive psychology, cognitive science, computer science, public administration, economics, management, philosophy of science, sociology, and political science, unified by studies of decision-making. With almost a thousand highly cited publications, he was one of the most influential social scientists of the 20th century. For many years he held the post of Richard King Mellon Professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Simon was among the founding fathers of several of today's important scientific domains, including artificial intelligence, information processing, decision-making, problem-solving, organization theory, complex systems, and computer simulation of scientific discovery. He coined the terms bounded rationality and satisficing, and was the first to analyze the architecture of complexity and to propose a preferential attachment mechanism to explain power law distributions. He also received many top-level honors later in life. These include becoming a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1959, election to the National Academy of Sciences in 1967, APA Award for Distinguished Scientific Contributions to Psychology, the ACM's Turing Award for Making Basic Contributions to Artificial Intelligence, the Psychology of Human Cognition and list processing the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics for his pioneering research into the decision-making process within economic organizations, the National Medal of Science, the APA's Award for Outstanding Lifetime Contributions to Psychology, ACM Fellow, and IJCAI Award for Research Excellence. A review of General Psychology Survey, published in 2002, ranked Simon as the 37th most cited psychologist of the 20th century. As a testament to his interdisciplinary approach, Simon was affiliated with such varied Carnegie Mellon departments as the School of Computer Science, Tepper School of Business, Departments of Philosophy, Social and Decision Sciences, and Psychology. Simon received an honorary Doctor of Political Science degree from University of Pavia in 1988 and an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from Harvard University in 1990. Early Life and Education Herbert Alexander Simon was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on June 15, 1916. His father, Arthur Simon, was an electrical engineer who had come to the United States from Germany in 1903 after earning his engineering degree from the Technische Hochschule of Darmstadt, an inventor who was granted several dozen patents. His father also was an independent patent attorney. His mother, Edna Marguerite Merkel, was an accomplished pianist whose ancestors had come from Prague and Cologne. His European ancestors had been piano makers, goldsmiths, and vintners. Simon's father was Jewish and his mother came from a family with Jewish, Lutheran, and Catholic backgrounds. Simon called himself an atheist. Simon was educated as a child in a public school system in Milwaukee where he developed an interest in science. He found schoolwork to be interesting, but rather easy. Unlike many children, Simon was exposed to the idea that human behavior could be studied scientifically at a relatively young age due to the influence of his mother's younger brother, Harold Merkel, who had studied economics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison under John R. Commons. Through his uncle's books on economics and psychology, Simon discovered the social sciences. Among his earliest influences, Simon has cited Richard E. Lee's economics textbook, Norman Angel's The Great Illusion, and Henry George's Progress and Poverty. In 1933, Simon entered the University of Chicago, and following those early influences, he studied the social sciences and mathematics. He was interested in biology, but chose not to study it because of his color blindness and awkwardness in the laboratory. He chose instead to focus on political science and economics. 
His most important mentor at the university was Henry Schultz, who was an econometrician and mathematical economist. Simon received both his BA and his PhD in political science from the University of Chicago, where he studied under Harold Laswell and Charles Edward Merriam. After enrolling in a course on measuring municipal governments, Simon was invited to be a research assistant for Clarence Ridley, with whom he co-authored the book Measuring Municipal Activities in 1938, the same year that he and Dorothea married. Eventually his studies led him to the field of organizational decision-making, which would become the subject of his doctoral dissertation academic career. From 1939 to 1942, Simon was director of a research group at the University of California, Berkeley. From 1942 to 1949, Simon was a professor of political science and also served as department chairman at Illinois Institute of Technology. Back in Chicago, he began participating in the seminars held by the staff of the Cowles Commission who at that time included Trigva Havelmo, Jacob Marshak, and Tialin Koopmans. He thus began a more in-depth study of economics in the area of institutionalism. From 1949 to 2001, Simon was a faculty at Carnegie Mellon. In 1949, Simon became a professor of administration and chairman of the Department of Industrial Management at Carnegie Tech. Simon later also taught psychology and computer science in the same university. Personal life and interests Simon married Dorothea Pye in 1938. Their marriage lasted 63 years until his death. They had three children, Catherine, Peter, and Barbara. His wife died in 2002, during the year following his death in 2001. From 1950 to 1955, Simon studied mathematical economics and during this time, together with David Hawkins, discovered and proved the Hawkins-Simon theorem on the conditions for the existence of positive solution vectors for input-output matrices. He also developed theorems on near decomposability and aggregation, having begun to apply these theorems to organizations. By 1954 Simon determined that the best way to study problem solving was to simulate it with computer programs which led to his interest in computer simulation of human cognition. Founded during the 1950s, he was among the first members of the Society for General Systems Research. Simon had a keen interest in the arts. He was a friend of Robert Lepper and Richard Rappaport. Rappaport also painted Simon's commissioned portrait at Carnegie Mellon University. In January 2001, Simon underwent surgery at UPMC Presbyterian to remove a cancerous tumor in his abdomen. Although the surgery was successful, Simon later succumbed to the complications that followed. Study of decision-making. I am a monomaniac. What I am a monomaniac about is decision-making, administrative behavior, first appearing in 1947, and updated across the years was based on Simon's doctoral dissertation. It served as the foundation for his life's work. The centerpiece of this book is the behavioral and cognitive processes of humans making rational choices, that is, decisions. By his definition, an operational administrative decision should be correct and efficient, and it must be practical to implement with a set of coordinated means. Simon recognized that a theory of administration is largely a theory of human decision-making, and as such must be based on both economics and on psychology. He states, there were no limits to human rationality administrative theory would be barren. It would consist of the single precept, always select that alternative among those available which will lead to the most complete achievement of your goals. 
Contrary to the homo economicus stereotype, Simons argued that alternatives and consequences may be partly known, and means and ends imperfectly differentiated, incompletely related, or poorly detailed. Simons defined the task of rational decision-making is to select the alternative that results in the more preferred set of all the possible consequences. Correctness of administrative decisions was thus measured by the adequacy of achieving the desired objective, the efficiency with which the result was obtained. The task of choice was divided into three required steps, identifying and listing all the alternatives determining all consequences resulting from each of the alternatives, and comparing the accuracy and efficiency of each of these sets of consequences. Any given individual or organization attempting to implement this model in a real situation would be unable to comply with the three requirements. Simon argued that knowledge of all alternatives, or all consequences that follow from each alternative is impossible in many realistic cases. Simon attempted to determine the techniques and or behavioral processes that a person or organization could bring to bear to achieve approximately the best result given limits on rational decision-making. Simon writes, The human being striving for rationality and restricted within the limits of his knowledge has developed some working procedures that partially overcome these difficulties. These procedures consist in assuming that he can isolate from the rest of the world a closed system containing a limited number of variables and a limited range of consequences. He therefore describes work in terms of an economic framework conditioned on human cognitive limitations. Economic man and administrative man. Administrative behavior, as a text, addresses a wide range of human behaviors, cognitive abilities, management techniques, personnel policies, training goals and procedures, specialized roles, criteria for evaluation of accuracy and efficiency, and all of the ramifications of communication processes. Simon is particularly interested in how these factors directly and indirectly influence the making of decisions. Simons argued that the two outcomes of a choice require monitoring and that many members of the organization would be expected to focus on adequacy, but that administrative management must pay particular attention to the efficiency with which the desired result was obtained. Simon followed Chester Barnard who pointed out that the decisions that an individual makes as a member of an organization are quite distinct from his personal decisions. Personal choices may be determined whether an individual joins a particular organization and continue to be made in his or her extra-organizational private life. As a member of an organization, however, that individual makes decisions not in relationship to personal needs and results, but in an impersonal sense as part of the organizational intent, purpose, and effect. Organizational inducements, rewards, and sanctions are all designed to form, strengthen, and maintain this identification. Simon saw two universal elements of human social behavior as key to creating the possibility of organizational behavior in human individuals. Authority and in loyalties and identification. Authority is a well-studied, primary mark of organizational behavior. Straightforwardly defined in the organizational context as the ability and right of an individual of higher rank to guide the decisions of an individual of lower rank. The actions, attitudes, and relationships of the dominant and subordinate individuals constitute components of role behavior that may vary widely in form, style, and content, but do not vary in the expectation of obedience by the one of superior status and willingness to obey from the subordinate. Loyalty was defined by Simon as the process whereby the individual substitutes organizational objectives for his own aims as the value indices, which determine his organizational decisions. This entailed evaluating alternative choices in terms of their consequences for the group rather than only for oneself or one's family. Decisions can be complex admixtures of facts and values. Information about facts, especially empirically proven facts or facts derived from specialized experience, 
are more easily transmitted in the exercise of authority than are the expressions of values. Simon is primarily interested in seeking identification of the individual employee with the organizational goals and values. Following Laswell, he states that a person identifies himself with a group when, in making a decision, he evaluates the several alternatives of choice in terms of their consequences for the specified group. A person may identify himself with any number of social, geographic, economic, racial, religious, familial, educational, gender, political, and sports groups. Indeed, the number and variety are unlimited. The fundamental problem for organizations is to recognize that personal and group identifications may either facilitate or obstruct correct decision making for the organization. A specific organization has to determine deliberately and specify in appropriate detail and clear language its own goals, objectives, means, ends, and values. Simon's contributions to research in the area of administrative decision-making have become increasingly mainstream in the business community, artificial intelligence and psychology. Simon was a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence, creating with Alan Newell the logic theory machine and the general problem-solver programs. GPS may possibly be the first method developed for separating problem-solving strategy from information about particular problems. Both programs were developed using the information processing language developed by Newell, Cliff Shaw, and Simon. Donald Nuth mentions the development of list processing in IPL, with the linked list originally called NSS memory, for its inventors. In 1957, Simon predicted that computer chess would surpass human chess abilities within 10 years, when, in reality, that transition took about 40 years. In the early 1960s psychologist Ulrich Nyshear asserted that while machines are capable of replicating cold cognition, behaviors such as reasoning, planning, perceiving, and deciding, they would never be able to replicate hot cognition, behaviors such as pain, pleasure, desire, and other emotions. Simon's work on emotional cognition was largely ignored by the artificial intelligence research community for several years, but subsequent work on emotions by Sloman and Picard helped refocus attention on Simon's paper and eventually made it highly influential on the topic. Simon also collaborated with James G. March on several works in organization theory. With Alan Newell, Simon developed a theory for the simulation of human problem-solving behavior using production rules. The study of human problem-solving required new kinds of human measurements and, with Anders Ericsson, Simon developed the experimental technique of verbal protocol analysis. Simon was interested in the role of knowledge in expertise. He said that to become an expert on a topic required about 10 years of experience and he and colleagues estimated that expertise was the result of learning roughly 50,000 chunks of information. A chess expert was said to have learned about 50,000 chunks or chess position patterns. He was awarded the ACMAM Turing Award along with Alan Newell in 1975. In joint scientific efforts extending over 20 years, initially in collaboration with J. C. Shaw at the Rand Corporation, and subsequently, SICK, with numerous faculty and student colleagues at Carnegie Mellon University. They have made basic contributions to artificial intelligence, the psychology of human cognition, and list processing, psychology. Simon was interested in how humans learn and, with Edward Feigenbaum, he developed the EPAM theory, one of the first theories of learning to be implemented as a computer program. EPAM was able to explain a large number of phenomena in the field of verbal learning. Later versions of the model were applied to concept formation and the acquisition of expertise. With Fernand Gobert, he has expanded the EPAM theory into the CHREST computational model. The theory explains how simple chunks of information form the building blocks of schemata, which are more complex structures. 
CHREST has been used, predominantly, to simulate aspects of chess expertise.